Hey guys, I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can install Ice Weasel on the Raspberry Pi. Now you may be asking, well, why install this Ice Weasel on the Pi? Well, remember one thing, um, that the Raspberry Pi is actually a very limited computer. The actual browser that comes with it is also very stripped down so that it doesn't, you know, overwork your, your poor little computer there. But there are times when we need more features. And that's why what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install a browser with more features. As a matter of fact, it actually is the exact same thing for most, uh, for almost any purpose. It is almost the same thing as Firefox. It's just called Ice Weasel. You might want to look it up in Google to see why. Anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to install it. Then we're going to make it easy to open. We're going to synchronize it. And then we're going to install one add-on that uh, is going to be very useful later on. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Now, we're starting off here at the desktop, the Raspberry Pi's desktop, and let's go ahead and start it off by typing sudo dash apt get install ice weasel. We I'm going to speed this up a little because uh, it takes about a, about a minute. I got my little time machine here. Okay. I know, and even then it looks slow. <laughs> so it's installing the, the it's it's um it's installing all of the uh, associated programs, and it should be done very soon. Okay. And an important reason why we're doing this is, of course, because we're going to connect this to our other computers. And some of the stuff we'll save on the other PCs, we're gonna, we don't want to switch between PCs, so small things we're going to want to use. Um, and we're just going to want to trade between browsers. Now, as you can tell, now that it's installed, you can find the Ice Weasel right from your menu. Okay. And that will launch it. There it is. As I said, this is a more powerful browser because it's practically all of Firefox. Unfortunately, that does mean this is going to run slower than the Epiphany browser. So, you know, it's a trade-off. Um, now, we're going to add it to the Quick Launch. And here, we go ahead and scroll down. Look here where it says Application Launch Bar. We open this. And we go look under installed applications on the right hand side. We look at internet. We select iSweasel and click add. And if you look at the top, you're going to notice that the icon was already added. We can move it anywhere we want. We'll move it right next to the other browser. Okay. And just for um, entertainment value, I also already installed LibreOffice. I'm just going to add that icon here now that I'm here. So. It's, that's just separate, but anyway, I'll do the same thing. Add. And then I'll go ahead and, um, no, I, I'll just close it. That's it. Okay, we close it. So now we uh, have the uh, Ice Weasel right up there for easy access. So now the next time we want to launch it, we don't even have to go to Menu. We can just click here. go. And so now that we have Ice Weasel, of course, by itself, yeah, there's no there's no good reason to use a fancier browser that's going to slow down the machine. No, what we want to do is we want to synchronize it. One other thing that I do a lot is now I have like about a couple hundred um, bookmarks that I keep, and I'm very, very good at uh, storing my bookmarks. So in order to get my bookmarks from my other computers, I have to sign on to sync. Okay. If you don't have an account, by the way, this would be a great time to sign up for one, okay? So, now, let's go ahead and click on that little link that is down below under getting, getting started. Not get started, unless, you know, you're getting started. Otherwise, click on the one below, okay? And here you go ahead and type in your email address and then your password. And it's connects to sync. Now the next thing you want to do, at least I do, 
is it's going to ask you, you know, what do you want to sync? I sync everything but the add-ons. And that's because all my browsers on my other computers have like a bunch of browsers. If you look up in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice that I got a little warning. It told me, hey, somebody signed into your Firefox account. That's intended to keep people from stealing your accounts. Well, it's better than nothing. But anyway, um, just remember, I would uncheck the add-ons, like I said, because you don't want all the add-ons on this on, on the Raspberry Pi. It'll, it'll totally slow down your machine. But I do like adding my bookmarks toolbar. Because now that I'm here, I can now look at all the bookmarks that I have on all my other machines. And as I said, I've got hundreds of bookmarks. As a matter of fact, it's going to take a while for them all to populate. Uh, you know, it might be faster on my other... Not only that, but this also saves your history. So whatever you've been looking at in the past in the other browsers, it'll save it here. So you'll be able to search things, stuff that you've searched for before. As long as you're not doing anything evil, there's no reason for you to... You actually, history history saving is actually a great idea. I like it. So, while it's populating, we're going to go and uh, look at the add-ons page for Firefox. Okay. And we go click in the search for add-ons little box here. And in here... Well, actually, before we even do that, you see those little uh, bookmarks on the on the right hand side that say most, most visited? That's always added by default. I always remove it because otherwise it's going to keep every time I sign into a new browser, it will uh, get it will add them and add them and I'll have like fifty thousand of them. All the rest of the bookmarks though are mine, so I know those. So okay, let's get back to what we were doing. Push bullet. This is a great program. What it does is it lets you send links, send files, send pictures between your browsers. Great idea. Um, it basically you can if you find something on your other computer, say you find a picture, you want to send it to your Raspberry Pi, you can do it through Push Bullet. There's a link, which I know. I mean, if you're if you're synchronized, it shouldn't matter. But trust me, there will be things you want to send a text file. You know, you've got uh, code that you've typed on your computer, but you want to send it to the Pi. Again. Very, very useful little application. Okay, so once it's there, we click to sign in. Okay. And actually, this one allows us to select either signing in through Google or Facebook. Um, I use my Google account, probably because I don't really have use Facebook for much other than what's essential, but it doesn't matter. In here, of course, I type in my uh, email address. What is my email address? Oh, yeah! <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then my password. What was that? Doggy Doggy 99. Okay, and then my verification code. And this little box down below, by the way, I'm going to type that, but I'm not going to show it to you. Uncheck that, yeah, unless you know that this machine is secure. Okay. Now that code that you were seeing, if you have two-factor authentication, it'll ask you for that. I actually could have shown it to you, and it wouldn't have mattered because it changes all the time. But I just decided to make things a little tougher to jerks. So anyway, here we are. Push bullet is installed and it's showing me the last things that I've sent to myself. But apart from that, we're good to go. We can install other add-ons and I'll show you later on what to install, but at least now you have an idea of how it works. So for now, I will let you go and um, just um, don't forget to do this, okay? Okay, take care. Bye.